Welcome back to the Engineered Angler. Today we're going to make a needlefish. If you don't know what a needlefish lure is, it's an old school wooden plug usually used uh, from the shore for surf casting for, well, just about any species that will run in the surf. So needlefish plugs come in a lot of different shapes and sizes. They're, some of them are stubby, some of them are long and thin, some of them sink really fast, some of them float on the top. The one we're going to make is kind of in the middle, but I want it to be a countdown lure. I want it to sink, but at a kind of medium rate but I want it to cast a long ways. All right I want it to be an overall length of six inches which is about 15 and a half centimeters and the thickest part will be about seven eighths of an inch which is 2.22 centimeters and I want that widest point about a third of the way from the back which is two inches. And if this is your first time to the channel, my name's Franco. I'm a professional engineer, a lure designer and lure maker, and an avid fisherman. And I make these videos to add just a little bit of engineering and physics into the art of lure making and to try to answer some of the questions about why lures do what they do. So I've got two 10 inch pieces of poplar cut and poplar is sort of a middle grade as far as density and hardness. It's light enough so you'll end up having to put a little bit of weight in the body and be able to balance it, but not so light that you gotta really put a bunch of lead in it. Now I'm not gonna get the density on this wood. I'm gonna show you a different way that I use to figure out the amount of weight I need to put in the lure and we're gonna do it specifically for the density of salt water because this is gonna be a saltwater lure. Now the reason I cut two pieces out is that I'm gonna make two of them. One will look very much like this. It might not have such a bottle nose to it. It might be more of a taper. And then the second one, I wanna scoop out the nose and move the tie and eye up on this flat surface. And this is a little bit of an experiment. I wanna make this lure have a little more action than just darting around in a straight line. that'll do. I got a nice taper at the nose and I've got the wide spot pretty much right where I want it. Now it's just a matter of getting some sandpaper on this thing, refining it a little further, and we should be able to just take it over to the bandsaw and cut the tail blocks off. Let's round off these ends. All right, now I'm just gonna draw a line down the middle of this thing, and I'm just gonna call this the top because I'm gonna put in a harness from the top down. All right, so I've drawn another line on the opposite side just to be able to set the location of the belly hook. And I'm gonna put that approximately a third of the way back.
All right, let's make that harness. And for the harness, I'm gonna use this wire. It's this stuff. It's made by AFW. It's stainless steel. It's 360 pound tensile strength. And what I like about it is that it's only 0.044 inch in diameter. Makes it a little easier to work with. I like starting off by making an eye. So I'm just gonna go ahead and twist this thing around itself and I'll finish it off with a pair of pliers. All right, that's some hard wire. So I've got my first eye and it's just a matter of bending the rest. To be able to get the uh, twisted part of that wire in this thing, uh, I have to like open it up a little bit with a drill bit. Now I'll go ahead and kink it where the next bend is gonna be for the belly eye. And I'll just continue with the same process. I'll dry fit it, mark where the next bend is gonna be and just make that bend. And then I just repeat. Then finally, I make the twist eye for the tail hook. It's a little easier this time. I've got a longer tail. All right, it's in place. And I'm just gonna fill this whole gap with uh, UV resin. Get that little bit in there to hold the front and put it under the UV light for just about 10 seconds and I'll do the rest the same way. All right, let's put a clear coat on this thing. All right, so I've got the first clear coat on this thing. It'll be probably 45 minutes before we can come back to it. And I'm gonna go ahead and work on that second one off camera because it's just a little too much for one video. So I'll go ahead and get to the point where it's got the weight in it and everything. All right, that should do it. Been in there about an hour. That looks halfway decent. Of course, it's still gonna need a light sanding. So this clear coat is all about getting it sealed. So I can do the next step, which is to figure out what the volume of this is so I can figure out how much weight to put in it. So we'll need my displayed Smith uh, cylinder. And all this is, is a piece of PVC with a hose sticking out of it. And it's glued down to a piece of wood. And we'll put water in this thing to check how much water this thing will displace. But first, we need to mix up some salt water. And we need to put the right ratio of salt to the water. I need about 500 or 600 milliliters to fill that uh, PVC tube. And I know that seawater has a specific gravity of 1.026. I know that might be meaningless to a lot of folks, but what that means is that for every 1,000 milliliters or liter, for every liter of salt water, there's about 26 grams of salt in it. So that makes it kind of easy. I want to mix about 600 milliliters, and that means I need to put in 15.6 grams of salt. So let's do it. All right, I'm gonna do 300 milliliters of water at a time. So that means I'll need 7.8 grams of salt. 7.81, that should be about right. So we'll pour that in there. And I'm gonna mix this till it dissolves and I'll pour it in the cylinder and we'll do this again. All right, I'm gonna make another one. And this is the second round. We need to overflow it just a little bit. All right, there it goes. All right, now I'm gonna let that overflow stop and then I'll know that I've got a level water line right there at the top of this tube. And then anything that comes out of there is gonna be due to the displacement of the body of the lure. All right, now I'm gonna put this cup here and tear it, just zero it. And now I'm gonna slowly uh, submerge the lure in here and you'll see the water start rushing out and just wanna make sure it doesn't overflow. And I'll get it down in there to make sure that the entire lure is in the water. And I'm just gonna hold it there till this thing stops dripping. And that looks like it's it. So the water weighs 51 grams. That means that to find the volume of the lure, all we have to do is take that 51 grams and divide it by the specific gravity of seawater. And remember we said it was 1.026 grams per cubic centimeter. So all we have to do is divide 51 by 1.026 and you get 49.7 cubic centimeters. So that's the volume of our lure. So that means we have to make sure that our final weight with hardware and hooks and everything is only slightly above that so it's a slow sinking lure. I'm gonna 
try to keep it at about 10% above that mark. So we're gonna shoot for something close to 54 grams for the final weight of this lure. 54, 55 will work, I think, work well. So let's weigh the lure. It's 28.23, and I'm also gonna weigh the uh, number two round bend hooks that I'm gonna use on it, and the split rings. So that's 31.49, and I'm gonna add another three grams for paint and a couple of more clear coats. So let's call that 34.5. So that means we need to add about 20 grams of weight to get this thing to sink. All right, so if I take these split shot and add them to the weight of the lure and the hooks, we end up right at 53 grams, which is super close to what we want. The rest of the weight will be added with the paint and the clear coats. So now I gotta figure out where to put these five split shots inside this body so that the lure will sink kind of evenly. All right, so now using this little level line and plumb line and a little hook that I've put on here, it's a little magnetic hook, I'm gonna hook the lure through any one of these little holes in, the, in this tape fin I put on here. And the idea is to keep moving it around until I have a nice level lure. But I gotta have my hooks in place to make sure that I capture what that will do to the balance. Okay, that's a little bit head down. And that's a little head up. And that looks to be just right. Just slightly head up, but I think that's about as close as we're gonna get. I'm gonna mark right where the, this plumb line crosses the body. And that spot, it should be the center of all the weight that I add. So, since I've got an odd number, that will work okay because I can put the first one right here in the middle. I can put one here. And then one equivalently distance from the center. And then one as close as I can put it to the front. And then just measuring how, the, how far that is, I'll go down towards the tail, the same distance. And that's one, two, three, four, five. That's five big holes I gotta drill. All right, let's get going. There you go. Looks like peas in a pod. All right, so next step is I'm gonna go ahead and fill these, sand it back, and we'll start painting. Just a little more sanding. All right, it's a new day, and I've had this thing going this morning in the chamber. Gave it another little thin clear coat after I got all these holes filled and sanded back. But let me show you the other one. So I've got the other one already made up. Also have all the weights in it and it's all sanded down. It's got a clear coat over it too. And you can see that what I did was just sort of grind out that point. So there's a little flat spot. I also made this thing just a touch shorter. It's like 3 eighths or half an inch shorter. I left the thickness the same on both of them. But the bigger difference is the weighting. I made this a fast sinking lure meant to drop tail down and meant to cast a long way. Before we paint, let's go ahead and put some foil on these guys. Given the uh, flotation screw up I did on the last video, I'm gonna go ahead and check this thing for sink rate. Looks good, good rate, and it's pretty much nice and level. All right, we're gonna do some simple paint jobs. This one, I'm just gonna go gold at mid body, and then on these little scales, I'm gonna put like a transparent green and then a, a dark top. And on the belly, I'm gonna just go white.
gonna do a little simpler. Uh, I just want a, a mullet pattern on this. I think I'm gonna go with gold with this one. Yeah, I think that's gonna work. And silver on the other one. All right, I'm pretty happy with this. Not too bad for a quick and simple couple of paint jobs. I'm gonna go ahead and coat these things with polyacrylic, give them a couple of coats and let it dry, and then we'll clear coat it, and then we're ready to put hooks on it and give it a try. All right, brand new day. Pretty happy with the outcome. They look pretty nice. Now it's just a matter of seeing what they do in the water. I'm gonna put some hooks on these things and we'll head to the lake. All right, we're out here in Big Lake Santa Fe. I'm in a little cove just to get out of the wind. But I'm gonna try this one first. All right, let's see how it looks. All right, check it out. And it has a really nice flash. All right, this one's gonna be a little more difficult to film because it's gonna wanna sink pretty fast, but we'll see. We'll have to retrieve it quickly. Oh yeah. Definitely has more action. Needs to get down deep. Yeah, it's definitely more erratic. But honestly, I think that's more due to the weighting than the shape of that front. Okay definitely has a more of a, an erratic twitch and it'll actually jump because of the back weighting all right this one is the one I designed to cast a long way let's give it a little flick holy crap it's gonna spool me Oof. the nice thing about a lure like this is that you can really play the entire water column because when I twitch it it jumps upward or let it go, it sinks pretty fast. All right guys, this is gonna have to be the end of the video. I'm gonna give this thing a good try out here. Let's see what happens. Tide's coming in, maybe we'll get lucky. If you like these saltwater lure bill, you should check out this one. It's one of my favorites, I think you'll like it. I'll see you all next Friday.